it working? Yes. Okay. All right. So, students, students, I know that many of you are absent today because you're taking the AP exam, and I don't know that you even want to go through and watch and see what, what was I going to do in class today. But the main thing I wanted to go, talk about for everybody, you guys, is just what you should do this last day, you know, before the AP exam. I, you know, you probably are going to go through some stuff um, and, and study like some main FRQ stuff. I'll tell you what to, to look at, look over the answer keys and stuff. But I wouldn't be trying to, to cram and stay up all night long. I mean, I think that you can trust yourself that you know a good bit of knowledge of AP chemistry. And the best thing you can do is to go in with a relaxed mind and not, not worry about it. Think, think like a strategy when you take the, the test, the multiple choice, and the, the FRQs. What are you able to answer? You know, if you see something, you totally don't know it, well, then you'll have to just skip it. Guess, you know, guess a wild guess. Remember, I, I know you've always heard this, but if you ever have to make a wild guess, always pick one letter the same, always. Pick one letter that you like, Okay. A lot of people always say, well, pick C. For some reason, I like to always pick B, but I don't know if that means anything. You know, they honestly, what they what normally they'll happen will happen is you you imagine if they had a hundred questions and there was A, B, C, D, that one fourth of them will be A, one fourth will be B, one fourth C, one fourth D. So if you put A on all of them, you get 25%. Now, what's strange is that um that there was, there's been some years of the AP, and Mr. Walker talked about this at, at, um, at AP Readiness, some years on the AP where you almost could just do that, just put a, C for all of them, and you pretty much almost passed it, okay? Isn't that crazy? Because it was such a big curve. Now, I don't know what it'll be like this year, but I would just say only if it's a wild guess. And a wild guess means you read a question and you're like, you know, oh, I totally don't know, you know, something about, Something about buffer this or that or something. Oh, that was a subject I did not know. I don't know. Okay. But, well, if you feel like you know a little bit, look closely. And what will be the pH, you know? What is the pH of something, la, 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 in, in this buffer or whatever? Well, then, you know, if you think, well, hey, I know um, mixing it together. Just say you, you feel like, well, it, um, it was, it, I don't think it, for example, let me see this. Uh, let's say that you had... NaOH, a strong base. Now, now don't worry if you don't understand, if you don't remember all this so much. NaOH is a strong base. And um, H vinegar, HC2, H3O2, or Chaku, there's two ways to write it. Vinegar is a weak acid. Okay, so here's what I want to show you. I just want to show you something. So let's just say that, oh, they give you a buffer. They, they, they mix together sodium hydroxide and acetate, I, I mean, acetic acid. And a weak acid, strong base. What will the pH be? Okay, make a guess. And they don't tell you any numbers or anything. Will it be like really, um, will the pH be, and they'll say something like pH 1, pH 14, 7. Okay, well, here's the deal. I just want to tell you this. Think about this for a minute. I'm not trying to teach you um, um, acid base, but I'm trying to show you something. So let's say there's a question about buffers. And let's just pretend that, you do not, you get the, ah, oh, failed buffers. Well, before you just put a wild guess, look at the question for a minute. What will be the pH when I mix NaOH, acetic acid, and maybe they throw in some, whatever. I won't talk about the titration. We don't even worry about numbers. They might not get any numbers. If that's a strong base and a weak acid, you're not going to get a strong acid produced, okay? That, that ought to be obvious, okay? So, well, I'm just telling you. So, you could rule out 1, 7, 14, I don't know. Four, you can at least rule out that choice because I know a strong base and a weak acid is not going to give me um, not going to give me a strong um, acid. It's most likely if you care now. Now, now I'll get into chemistry. So what that would mean is if the choices were A, B, C, D. Well, now it's not so much the wild guess. You'd say, well, if I was guessing C, I'm like, I can rule out A. So I know it's not A. So now it's between these. And you might look at them and say, well, you know, I don't think it'll be neutral. I don't think it's going to be a really strong base because you did add some acid. You know, a strong base would be pH 14. I think you know that. So pH 14 is the, the most basic. pH 1 is the most acidic. Okay. Well, anyway, 
you might not even know the details, but the, the point I'm trying to get across is if you feel like you could, you know a little bit about it and you could rule out a couple of answers, then it's not really so much a wild guess. And, you know, you might say, well, you know, actually, well, I don't know what the amounts are they're going to give you on this. There's no, there's no definite answer. What matters is how much you get of those two things. If it were to equivalence point, then it would be slightly basic, which means it would probably be like pH 8 or something. But, but anyway, if you want to get to that. So, all right. On the other hand, though, if you have no clue, just pick one letter and stay with that one wild guess. My wild guess letter will be B. Don't put B, A, B, A. You know, I always tell people when it bubble it. Don't put A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, because that then you're really messing yourself up. So for anything you don't know, and you guys are going to have 100 multiple choice, 60 on the, on the first section, and then there's going to be a 40 section, FRQ, then there's going to be one long FRQ, and, and then uh, two, sorry, two short FRQs, all right? So three total. And I think it's like a, a, a one, 90 minutes for this one. It's on that, that little handout I gave you that says formulas not on the AP formula sheet. Okay, so that's one little thing about strategy. Now, another thing about strategy, and usually I, um, I, I can't, this won't work so much on your exam, it will work for what they for what I read. It, it will slightly work, but what they normally do on the AP. Let's talk about that long FRQ. It said that for the FRQ questions. Now I don't know if this will be true for also for the FRQ multiple choice. I'm not sure, but for the FRQ questions, it says that if a if a problem has part A, B, C, D, E, you know F, whatever. I think the short FRQs will have A, B, C. Maybe four parts, but they'll have three or four parts on the short, the two short ones. The long one will probably have six parts or maybe even more. But what they said is that on that question, somehow you're going to be able to go, before you submit the entire FRQ, you're going to be able to go, go back to like part A or whatever and go back and forth. Okay? So that's a really good thing because let me tell you, when you're, um, when you're watching the time, and let me look for a minute at what's going to be. I want to check the, the format I gave you. Um, what was it? Oh, boy. Please stay on computer, okay? Um, George. All right, it was AP. There's a, there's a handout I put up called AP. Formula equations not on the AP sheet, you know, 2021. Okay, the first page of that, I wrote down the format of the exam for you. Okay, so uh, 60 questions, multiple choice. We told you about what to do with that one, all right? If you can, if you have no clue in the world, take one favorite letter, wild guess, you know? If you, I for some reason, I feel like B or C are the best letters to pick, okay? But um, I don't know, but A could be all right too, but I don't know. Um, now, um, what else did I want to m mention to you? Um, multiple choice. Well, it might not be A, B, C, D. It might just be the first, second, third, fourth. But in that case, but, you know, but you can always go to the second one or whatever, or the third one. Okay, so that's 60 minutes. If you have no clue, wild guess. If you have, if you have a little bit of knowledge about it, then think, I can, can I rule out a couple of these? I'm like, oh, I know it's not going to be B, so this, I'm not going to pick B for this one, that kind of thing. Okay, now for, um, all right, part two is going to be um, multiple choice free response. You're going to have 40 multiple choice questions for 60 minutes. Okay, so part two is going to be 40 multiple choice. Now, these are the FRQ multiple choice, all right? So this might be things that when you study an FRQ problem, the ones that I posted up, the little things that are like, oh, that's a short question, A, B, C, D, E, F, th those kind of things will be in this part. All right, but anyway, okay, back to this. I, I got off the subject and I, I, I interrupted myself. When you get to the FRQs, they claim online that digitally you're going to be able to go forward and backward before you submit that, that FRQ. So if that's the case, you actually could do like the real AP, and that would be to look at the question and if you first read it and you think, oh my gosh, don't be scared of this. I don't think I know this. I don't know it. Remember this. Remember this important little tip that I always hear at UCLA too. AP 
costs money to take the exam, all right? If everybody who pays for the exam, if everybody were to fail it, then nobody will take the AP exam next year, okay, if they didn't pass anybody. So think about business, and business tells you that you want at least, you want more than half the people to pass. You do. If less than half pass it in the country, and they're taking it, then they're going to start losing money. So usually most AP exams, minimal will be like, you say, 55 to 60%. Now, AP Chem might be on the lower end of that, but they have a really big curve on AP Chem. So if you really, I think one reason why AP Chem might be a little bit lower, like maybe just say just say like 54% might pass it's in the country. But that's, that's still a good bit, okay? The reason is because a lot of people take AP Chemistry. A lot of people do. Not a lot of people take AP Physics. You know, it's like AP Bio has the greatest number. AP Chemistry is second. A lot of people think AP Bio, the next year, AP Chemistry, that AP Physics is like that. Not that many people take it. People do better on AP Physics because very few people are select or taking that class. But AP Chem, there's a lot of people, and think about this, like even where I grew up in Alabama or some states, they might not have very good programs, and they say, everybody just takes it. They just all take it, okay? The, the state pays for it or whatever. Okay, so that means people go in there, and so there's a lot of people are going to be doing this thing that aren't really serious about it, all right? So think about that. So if you're trying it all on this and you're hard studying, you know, you got an A, B, or C in my class and you're, hard, you're studying for this any amount away, I think you're in great shape, okay? And anybody's a chance. And I also told you the other day, and don't forget this, it is not bad if you make a two. If, if, a, if a student was in AP chemistry the whole year, a lot, you know, we had, when we started the year off, you know, we've had like four or five students drop out of this class since we started in, in um, August. They dropped out. Now, I'm not saying bad for whatever reasons. Maybe this wasn't their thing and all. But when a college sees it, say, hey, this person was in AP Chem, and even though they made a low first semester, they stayed in next semester. Okay, they had a hard time. and they did C's and D's. But you know what? They took the AP exam. They made a two on it. That means something to colleges. It really does. As opposed to somebody that just, ah, oh, just got out of the class, tried to erase it, and took some other thing. Okay. So anyway, so that I think about that. But back to the FRQ strategy. Sorry, and I, as I as I always interrupt myself. Um, if it has A, B, C, D, E, F, a lot of times on an FRQ, usually the hardest questions are like you know these two, but not always. Sometimes E might be the easiest question, okay, or F might be sometimes. So sometimes it, they'll they'll get you on that. So like you know write a, a little equation or something. So. Be, be sure to look through them, and the good thing is you'll be able to go back. Now, you can only do this with the, with the, the long and the short. I'm going to guess the two short FRQs are ABC, ABC. I don't know if you can do it on the multiple choice FRQ part, the 40. If you do, that would be great too. So if, but it'll let you know that. It'll say this question has four pages or whatever before you submit. You can go back. It'll tell you that on the question, I'm sure. I'm sure it will tell you that. So, you know, you might. And remember this. If I can just get three of these, I pass that FRQ question. If I can just get three of these right. Now, if they give you three, I, I don't know. Maybe it'll be four parts. Maybe it'll have like a part, an, a one and two, but whatever the case. Well, you know, hopefully you get two out of three. Yeah, I'll just say two or three at least, the best you can. One might do it if there's only three of them. Sometimes one might be enough. So anyway, and um, and don't forget the, the strategy too that if you – if you, um, well, this won't matter for you guys, I don't think at all. I, I don't think you're going to enter numbers in. Like, I don't think you're going to do that. But if you did, I don't know. I haven't seen it. But if you did, let's just say the answer to, to let A was was 15. And then on B, you have to use the answer to A. Okay? Well, if you put a wrong answer here, like say you put 20, A will be marked wrong, but now they're going to recalculate B based on your answer. So, they do that on the AP when they grade. So I don't think they're going to do it for, for this, this one. You know, but who knows if they get elaborate about it. If you ever have to type in a number, that's a little bit of a confidence thing. Okay, so that's enough of that right there. So FRQ. Now let's, let's, let me talk about a little bit about the content, and then I'll, I'll talk about. And by the way, the FRQs say you're going to have 45 minutes to do the FRQs. Think about this. Three FRQs, 45 minutes. What do I always tell you? You should be able to do an FRQ in 15 to 20 minutes, even the short ones. So, you know, a long, 
You think maybe the long one I need like nearly 20 or, you know, 45 minutes total. I don't know. What does that mean? Just think about that. If I spent 20 minutes on the long one, then I've got 25 minutes. I've got 12.5 for each short one. Short, short. Okay. So you might kind of watch that a little bit. Just you know, I know you don't think about watching the time when you're doing them, but just do the best you can and don't worry. Um, long answer. I'm seeing what else I got to say about that. Okay, now, now let, me, let me say something about the content. Okay, I first of all, I, I, I sent a message a moment ago to everybody. The FRQs. I don't want you to be like, oh no, I haven't done all those FRQs. What am I going to do? These FRQs, I'm only letting them count as a daily work, daily one little point each, okay? Now, um, I, fi I decided that five of them are going to be bonus, and I, I, let the, I picked the five that they would be. If you did some of those and you haven't done some others, that, that could cancel out. And I might even drop a couple of other ones too. Like I, might, I never drop daily po points, you know, um, because, you know, your daily points, you should do them. That's your, that's your participation. But I'm, but I'll look at the FRQs and how many I gave you, and I might possibly, I might drop a couple of them. Okay, so, but I'll, I'll just say officially, as I wrote in the message, you can, there are five of them that you don't have to worry so much about. Um, I wrote these FRQs that are on. Well, you know, I hate to say this, but Redox Stoic, you you really need to know how to do a um uh a a redox equation, like you know, you add H plus to this side, oh, and then OH, well, H2O, H2O to this side, H plus to this side. You remember all of that? There's a video you can find it too, but but anyway, the redox stoic problem. If you haven't done it, I decided to make it a bonus. So, I, anybody who had a zero, I erased your zero, okay, on the FRQ stoic. Now, the other FRQs you can skip if you needed to. The one on the base, KB, the one on uh, both of the electron ones. Now I would, I mean, if if there's any way, I would when I say skip, I would at least look over the answer keys to these, especially the electron, because it's been a while. If you haven't done these at all, electron configuration, uh, the PES they call it and all that, that's an important thing to look at. But anyway, you can skip them. You can skip that. You can skip that, and then the, the skip the one on gases. So the, the pretty much the last five four. And then one of the, and the redox story. The KA, I want you to do that one. I want you to look at that KA. Come on, try to do that. All right. So I'm for sure five of them are bonus. All right. And maybe, maybe I'm going to just drop two more. Like drop, you know, in the words, if there's two zeros, I might, I think I'll just, I'll make a note that I'm probably, probably going to drop two more. But try to do all you can. Now, I put up two other FRQs today. What? But these are not assignments. I just put up FRQ and answer keys. For Beer's Law and for a limiting reagent. Limiting reagent stoichiometry. Limiting reagent and Beer's Law. Now, for some reason, um, you know, Beer's Law is a lab that we don't, we don't, not all schools can do because it takes some computer equipment to do it to analyze the color of a liquid and, you know, finding out the molarity by the color of the liquid, by the brightness, the darkness. Okay? You might not remember that question. We did a little lab on it. You remember that now. But AP made a little problem like that that they had. Some people did them, but I decided to not do that one. I, just, I decided to just, I didn't know how to get the computer working and all that. They did an online uh, sample problem. You could find, I mean, you don't want to find it right now. It's the day before. But So I had you just do the lab paper, and I did the video for you. I explained about Beer's Law. So I don't know. I just thought, why don't I put the FRQ? So you have the answer keys. If you wanted to just see those, so these minor, minor gases, electron, electron, they're going to ask stuff about this, but it won't be the big, it won't be the, the big bulk of the stuff, but it'll be, it'll be, I mean, I, I don't know, now that I say that, what if the short FRQ could be on electron configuration? It really could be. But I'm just telling you, because of time, you know, what did I put near the end? I put these, these are the last priority, the lowest priority. So I would say of all of these on the board right now, they can skip. I would probably say that the electrons are the most important ones. Of, of all the things you can skip, the electron FRQs, look at those. So if you're like, okay, Vela said he'll drop two of my FRQs. 
for anybody. If you have two zeros, I'll drop them. And he also said that, um, well, I'll drop two of your daily participations for the 20-week period. So if those happen to be FRQs, that, that's what it'll be. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'm gonna, now I'm making it official. So I'll, I'm going to drop two daily participations for everybody. And then I'm going to say that you can skip five FRQs. These are the FRQs that you can, that I'm not even going to, they're all going to be bonus. So if you did do them, you'll just get a blank. There'll be no grade. If you did them, you'll get a, a credit, okay? And that credit can actually help to make up for a dropped participation. So it's, it's like, it is good work. But the last thing I'll say before I move on, if there's anything on here that you have time to go back to, make it the electrons. And at least read over them and try try those. Because they're going to ask about electron configuration. They will. All right. Here, now we'll go back to what are the big subjects. So I, I really want you to today to just to think to go through and just say, I want to look at the equation sheet and I want to go through what every formula stands for and what unit it must be in. If you just know that for the equation sheet and then look at my equation sheet that I made, the formulas that are not on the AP. But I'll remind you that here are the biggest topics again, the big topics on the AP exam. Number one, equilibrium. They always ask an equilibrium FRQ. They've always done that. And then there'll be multiple choice questions about equilibrium as well, but they always have asked equilibrium. They have always asked a thermo, thermo question every single year. So the FRQs on in equilibrium, I, most of y'all have done these. I looked. And most of you have done the thermos as well, okay? I think I told you the first thermo FRQ, that one I would not worry so much. But the second and third one, you have an entire packet on every type they could give you. KA, KB. KSP, K, um, well, KC or KP for gas. So these are both gases. So you've got eight, two of each, two of each, okay? Maybe the gas is one. They, they kind of mix them. Um, thermo, I gave you th uh, two FRQs, one, two, three. I'll just say the first FRQ is not that big of a deal if you're, if you're really like at the bottom line of this. All right, and then we're just about there. Number three, I told you, is kinetics. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Number three is FR, is IMF. IMF. Now, I did not give you an FRQ on IMF, but instead, I gave a video. And I said, watch this video. It tells you how to answer the question. And you have 25 sample questions. Which of these compounds has a higher boiling point? H2O or H2S? Explain why. Or which of these compounds has a higher first ionization energy? Which, which element? Phosphorus or arsenic? Explain why. I've got 25 samples and the answers to those questions written, typed out on a PDF. That, that is going to be probably the third biggest topic in my, in my prediction. All right, now number four and five, these are kind of in a tie with each other. One of them is going to, well, if they might, it's possible they might not ask any FRQ on kinetics or on electro. I have a good feeling that they will find a way to work it in, especially if they have those 40 multiple choice questions. They could put it, um, electro, they could easily put into that, but um, electrochem. So, but kinetics, there are two that I gave you. There's a, and they're both very good, um, they're both very good FRQs, both of these, because it tells you either method initial rates or the graph type. And then the electrochem, I did not give you an FRQ on that, but I did put up, the answer key to the electrochem quiz, to, uh, to a quiz, an actual quiz I gave a while back with my red writing answer key, and I also put the FRQ on electrolytic cell. So, again, that might be um, that. Wait, wait, there it is. Those are the five. So if there's anything in that category of, it, of two kinetics, the last two thermo, that's probably, I would say, at least get that, that, um, hopefully you've done two of the equilibrium. If you can do all of them, they're all up there. Did I put a KSP? Yeah, oh no, KB and K K B and KA were the last two I put up. That's right. Okay, so KSP. So hopefully you've done the, the equilibrium. You got the packet and you've looked at these. So that those are the biggest things to see on the AP. More than half the AP questions will be on those topics I just showed you. All right, okay, so... Let me take a break for a minute and show you what I'm always telling people to do. 
I do not want you to stay up all night long doing this. But, you know, you might spend some time. You might spend two or three hours later and go through those FRQs I talked about, starting with the most important topics I mentioned. And then you, if you've got some time to do some of the extras, like I said, I guess electrons would be the next thing on the list. Okay, but here is what you ought to do. I'm going to show you. This is what you should probably do today. Like, I don't want you to go to bed late at night. I do not want you. Don't do that, okay? Just just say, I know what I know. I've tried. You know, if you say, I've got, I can do three hours. I can, I can study for three hours my, my, for AP today or two hours or whatever, hopefully three. But you say, well, maybe half the time I'm going to try these FRQs and look at them. But then this is what you really ought to do. Go to the equation sheet, and I'll, I will, um, let me look. I'm looking at how much time I've got in here. This class goes until 40, 10, 40. Okay, we got 30 more minutes. I will see if my video holds out that long. I'm going to look on the equation sheet, and, oh, boy. All right, I want to talk about some things on there. I actually put something else up there. I don't know that I've even got time. Maybe, well, I don't know. We'll see. i got 30 minutes. I'll, I'll try hard. Okay. Um, boy, it's so crazy on my computer to find this stuff. All right. Yeah, the, oh, the extra topic FRQs. So, yeah, I would say I did not make a, an assignment. The extra topic FRQs at Limiting Reagent and Beer's Law, I would say that you know, electrons are still more important than those two. But if you want to look at how they ask a limiting reagent, um, for AP, all right, AP formula sheet, all right, AP formula sheet. First, I'll, I'll continue this. I started this last time, and I was telling you, make sure you know what everything stands for. And you can even write it on your paper, on your, right, you know, E, H, V, well, it tells you, okay, on the AP formula sheet, it says E is energy, V is frequency, um, lambda is wavelength. They tell you that. They, they tell you that right there. But what they don't tell you is the units. And I was telling you about that the other day, about how, how if you know the constant, like if Planck's constant is, it, it's in joule dot S, and you think, well, wait a minute, why is it joule dot S? Because it, energy is in joules, and frequency is in hertz. HZ. However, another way to write Hertz is S negative 1. And so that's why S and S negative 1, they cancel out. Well, anyway, just knowing the unit, if you see HZ, or they have used S negative 1 before, rarely, I think, then that, that means it's frequency, and that plugs in there. Okay? If they give you, watch, KHZ, that means kilohertz, and you know, 1 kilohertz is 1,000 hertz. They'd expect you to know kilo. Kilo, centi, and milli, they would expect you to know for sure. Probably nano and mega also. Nano. If you remember one meter is one times ten to the ninth nanometer. One uh, mega meter is one times ten to the six mega uh, six meters. I don't know if they would put in micrometer, but it's ten to the six mu meter. But anyway, I mean, it's not bad to have those three. So if they gave you some problem, it's like you're talking about energy, uh, light. Light has the, um, the, the, the frequency, or they won't say the word frequency, but the light is measured to, have, to be um, 3, 000, 300 kilohertz. That wouldn't be visible light. But anyway, and they want to calculate something. So kilohertz, i got to change it into hertz, and I know it will plug in for the V. That's the frequency. Okay, times that will give you the energy. So anyway... I'm just telling you, um, go through every equation and write that on your sheet, all right? Let me see. I, I can try a few more. All right, under that, it has equilibrium, and they write what do you need for KC, KP, KA, KB. I mean, that's nice they give that to you, but, yeah, I mean, you got the format right there in front of you. If you want to use that, you can. They don't, interestingly, for the KA, they don't put water. Well, water is never in it. Oh, yeah. Well, they don't, interesting is not supposed to be in it. I shouldn't say interesting. It, water, H2O, should not be in that. It is not. It isn't. Don't worry. But what I meant is, remember this, well, for acid, like, they can say you have an acid, like, let's say HF plus water gives you um, H3O plus and F negative. Or HF 
gives you H plus and F negative. Both of these are acid equations, and both of them use the same Ka expression, which would be, in one of them you'll put H3O plus times F negative over HF. No water is in it. In the other one, you'd put H plus. Is that showing up? Oh, no, not on my. Maybe you guys can't see it too good, but H plus times F negative over HF, okay? And by the way, um, I remember grading these on some people's. Make sure you write Ka equals, okay? When they say write the Ka expression, some people just write, just write without the Ka, they just write HF, H3O, F negative over HF. And make sure you put the brackets. So they might have you type it, okay? I don't know how that's going to work. They might have you type it on there. So they, they said, I told you, I, don't, I didn't even have time. I tried to do the digital exam, and it said uploading to your thing. I have a little practice copy, but I didn't even look at it. I, I, I mean, I, I wasn't able to get into it myself. But I was just saying the main thing is you might want to, well, I don't know if you want to do that or not. You, you can decide. If, um, if you, I mean, if you really are motivated, uh, no, I don't even want to tell you. I don't want to do anything, say extra credit. No, I don't even want to say that. I've given you enough work, and the last thing I want you to do is you to cram this day with studying stuff. I'd say two to three hours maximum, and this might be this is probably the might be the first thing you should do before the FRQs, perhaps I don't know, but we'll go through. So they have give you all the equations for pH. Um, you you know this stuff like pH plus pOH equals fourteen. Now some equations I write them a little bit different than they do on there on the on the paper there. Like, uh, like, you know this, like I tell you that 1 times 10 to the negative 14, um, H, H3O plus, or H plus times OH negative will always give you, well, I'll say always, at 25 Celsius will always give you 1 times 10 to the negative 14. That's called the KW. So they give you that equation kind of in a, in a weird way, but, and they give you the, the, um, the buffer equation too. Okay. All right, look at, all right, next, I got, I'm looking at like 15, 20, no, I got a little bit more time. I'm still doing good, 12, 10, 40. Yeah, we're doing 25 minutes left, okay. 25, yeah. Okay, for um, kinetics equations, all right. This, remember that in kinetics, I, I think it's good. I don't really like the way they write their equation on the AP formula sheet for kinetics. So I'm going to show you real quick. Remember, there's zero order, there's first order, and there's second order. Zero order, can you remember a straight line? is just going to be the concentration of the chemical, like A, versus time. And it will give you a straight line with a negative slope. So, A final is equal to whatever um, negative KT plus A initial. All right? A final is negative KT. Y equals MX plus B, slope. You might remember that. Y equals MX plus B. Now, to be real careful with this, because I, I know I had, I've told y'all this before, and it, it backfired on one thing I gave. If you ever see an equation like this, 2A breaks down, I don't know, into, I don't know, or gives you A2 or something like that. If you saw an equation like that with a 2 in front of it, well, then what the slope equals... N times K. In this case, 2 times K. All right? The slope of the line. All right, that, that's in a little thing, a little trick, a little thing they've been doing lately. But if it's not, and usually it's just a 1, well, then N is 1. It won't matter. Slope is equal to your, your rate constant. Slope is the rate constant. If it's a 1 there, if there's a 2 there, it's, you know, it's to be 2K. If it's a 3, it'll be 3K. So I'll say NK. But do not put this down here in that. Do not put it there. I once told you to do that. No, do not put the N right there. Don't, don't, don't. Just put it, when you find the slope, you, you put it right there. If you have to find, if you're finding K by finding the slope, know that that's true. But if you're down here finding K, you, you put in some data from the data chart and the time, then it won't be, it'll be based on data and the time. No, that will give you a different number. Okay, for zero order, the equation, its natural log will give you the straight line. Ln of A, concentration of A, versus time, gives you another straight line negative slope. That equation looks like that one, but it will be, in fact, let me just write it here. Does it? You, can't, you guys can't see that good on, 
on my phone perhaps, but it's ln of a final is negative kt, negative kt, plus ln of a initial, all right? And then the other one is they either write 1 over a versus time, or sometimes they write a to the negative 1 power. It, they mean the same thing. And this time, think about this. This is an inverse. You're, you're flipping it. When you flip it, the line also flips, and it goes up. And this equation is a positive. So you can write it either way. I, I think it's, I like to write better. A to the negative 1 power final equals positive kt plus a negative 1 initial. Okay, now all of these, it's true. The slope of a line will equal k unless the equation has like, you know, 2a breaks down to give you a2 or, or forms a, a2. Well, in that, in, that kind of a, in that kind of a reaction, if you have a quotient 2, the slope would equal 2 times k, nk, all right? It, it's happened rarely in the entire history of AP exams, but it happened like 20 years ago, and then they did it about five years ago, or maybe maybe four years ago they did it. Yeah, four, four or five years ago. Then they did it the very next year. So they did something four years ago. I, I talk about how they did, they do something on the AP they had not done in 25 years, and people got real mad. Why you pull that up from? And then they did it again the very next year. Okay. Anyway, you, you might not be able to see on the on my phone if I, over here, but I'll oh well I'll try to oh no if you can, oh no okay if you can see it good enough. These are the equations that I would use for kinetics. Okay, zero, first, or second order. Now they rearranged them on the AP formula sheet, and you can use them if you want to on the AP formula sheet. Sorry, but I like them. I like them that way. All right. Now let me fix. I'm sorry, but my hand's gonna have to be there. All right. Um, so PV and RT is on there. You can do this kind of on your own too. PV and RT. Oh, here's one. Now I put this on the formulas that are not on the AP formula sheet. Mole fraction. Wow, raise that thing from the dead. Where have you heard that before? Okay. Mole fraction of chemical A is equal to the number of moles of chemical A divided by the number of total moles. Usually in a mixture of gases, that's probably all you're going to see it in. It's, it's, it's with any solutions, but um, mainly you'll probably see it with a mixture of gases. But if, it could be in solutions. I don't know how they would do that because they, they ruled out, or they, they didn't rule it out, they kept, there's a chapter on this that we don't ever do in AP. We've been doing it for like four years. But anyway, but it, for, for gases, you need to know mole fraction. And it is also equal to the partial pressure of A over T. Now, this is an, is an example of an equation that I like my, I like this, my little form, better than what they give you on the AP formula sheet. So I wrote that on mine. And even molar mass, you know, this is one. Molar mass is just gram per mole. Number of grams divided by number of mole. I think that's easier than what they give you on the sheet, which says N equals a small M over capital M. What is that? Well, that means molar mass, uh, yeah, just I, ah, gram per mole. All right, I, I, don't like, I don't like the way they write that. Um, Dalton's Law, partial pressures is on there. Total pressure is A, pressure A plus pressure P plus pressure C. Kinetic energy, one half MV squared. And then um, the molarity is mole per liter. Yeah, they don't even really give you an equation of that. So see, I think it's better to know molarity equals number of moles divided by number of liter. I think that's just more practical to write it that way. Capital L, liter. They just write it in words for you on that equation. All right. Now, we're almost done with all the equations. Look, I guess I'm going to be able to do them. Let me watch the time. And I, still, and I still can go through something else I wanted to talk about. Okay, I'm doing the equation sheet for you. Mole per liter, molarity mole per liter. Then it has the kinetics equations. Uh, the kinetic, I mean, I'm not, not, not the kinetics. The thermo equations, delta S, delta H, delta G. And, you know, the delta H is a more commonly asked. The sum of all the delta H of formations of the pro reactant. No, no, products minus reactants. Sorry about that. Products minus delta the sum of the delta H formation of all the reactants. Now, one little, a couple of things to tell you about this that I would always do. First of all, 
I like to always put brackets around those. Because if I've got two reactants, you know, it's delta H of like, just say if it's H2O2, H2O. Well, I've got delta H of H2, then delta H of O2. Add those together for the, oh, that's actually, that's the wrong way. I'm sorry. The products will be delta H of H2O will go first. And put that in brackets. I'm writing it very quick and messy. I know we're out of time almost. Delta H of H2 plus delta H of O2. All I'm trying to show you is, first of all, two, two things important. Two important things about that equation. All right, two. One, number one, make sure you put brackets around all the products and all the reactants. Because that negative sign can affect your total inside here. All right? Put brackets. The other thing is, put this letter, and I'll have to write it here, in in front of delta H and N in front of delta H because don't forget the number of moles. If it's H2, 2H2 plus O2 gives you 2H2O, put 2 times that. If it's H2 plus 1 half O2 gives you 1 H2O, when you put the O2, make sure you put 1 half in front of this delta H value. Hopefully you remember those two things. Brackets and don't forget to put the N number of moles, add that to the equation. Another thing to tell you about this equation is it works for delta H, delta S, or delta G. And there's a delta, oh, there's a delta G, delta G, and there's the delta, the S of formation doesn't have a delta sign on it, but it's the S of formation of the products minus S of formation of the reactants. So you've seen those three equations. If you did those two thermos, thermo for FRQ number two and number three that I told you, that'll pop up. You can look at the answer key and it'll remind you. It's good to know, as I told you, what does everything stand for? What does every unit? And remember, delta H is always in kilojoule per mole. Okay? Delta G is usually in kilojoule per mole in that equation. But now in some equations, it's in joules. So you got to look at the constant. you got to look at the things that are, that are given. And delta S is in joule per mole Kelvin. That's the weird one. Okay, so be careful. The only time it's really going to matter is when you combine all three into the big equation. And I told you that if you you can you can guarantee yourself that this is going to pop up. This equation will be on the AP exam tomorrow. You know when you see a thermo problem, especially if you see a therm an FRQ question that talks about delta H, delta S, some question or delta G, you know you're going to have to use this at some point in there, okay? Delta G, kilojoule per mole, delta H, kilojoule per mole. Now, S will be given in joule per mole, Kelvin, but you got to change it into kilojoule per mole. So, like, you know, if they say delta S is 8 joule per mole Kelvin, it won't be 8, but then you have to put 8 over 1,000, to now it becomes kilojoule per mole Kelvin, and of course the Kelvin will go away, and the temperature must be in Kelvin. So I was telling you, I kind of got away from it, but you should look over every equation and make sure you know, do you know what unit they're in? And I'm telling you a lot of this now, you can be writing it down, you know, this has, this is probably going to be given in joule per mole, but it's got to be changed to kilojoule per mole. Okay, and and then the electro equations and all of that you see. Now there's two equations on there for electro. Um, the last one is the Nernst equation. And again, I would say the Nernst equation, you see it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then I wouldn't worry because it, it will be the thing. It's, like, it's kind of like that might be like if, there's a, if, if they gave a long FRQ on this, that would be the question that would like be, you know, maybe to make a five or I don't even know. Probably you, if you're going to make a five, you probably already know that. You use that equation, you probably got that right on the quiz. There's another question down there you might wonder about. I equals Q over T. And this is about current. I never get, I don't really use that equation because let me just tell you what it means. I is the current and it's measured in amps. Amp, the amperes or amp. Q is the charge, okay, and it's coulombs and time is in seconds, okay. So, if they tell you you have a 5 amp current, 5 amp, that means you have 5 coulombs per second. That's, that's how fast the current is flowing. 
So you don't really ever need the IQT. I just I like to just instead of this equation, I like to remember amp is coulomb over a second. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Five amp. Well, that's five coulombs for one second. Or in other words, five coulombs equals one second if you're doing a conversion. Okay. And is there another one? There is QMC delta T, and I did not, I did not really give you an FRQ on that. But I told you. If you, I mean, this is the last, absolute last priority. I don't think they're going to ask you to do a problem. They could give you that. Just Let's just know what it stands for. Q is the amount of heat in joules. Okay, J. M is the mass in grams of a substance. C is called the specific heat constant. I call it constant, but it's capacity. Capacity. Okay, and it's in joule per gram over gram degrees Celsius. Sometimes they write joule degrees Celsius gram, but it's the same thing. T, change in T is, is T2 minus T1. Now, here's an interesting thing. Um, these temperatures can be in Celsius, but they can also be in Kelvin. And it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter if they gave you both because, look, Kelvin and Celsius... You would, if they gave you Kelvin, you can still subtract them. You get the same change as Celsius. But oh well. Okay, so the only thing I would I would probably say about that, that problem is if they said you have 25 grams of gold, gold has a specific heat of 19 joule per gram degrees Celsius. You have 25 grams of gold, and you want to heat it from 20 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius. How much um, heat do you have to add? How much heat do you have to add? How much heat? I'll plug in all the numbers, and then I'll just calculate it. That's probably the main thing. If you want to see a giant FRQ on that, you know, I did one in calorimetry in, back, in, back in the um, thermo chapter, calorimetry one and calorimetry, the, the, the first and second video on calorimetry, I go through that, calorimeter. I don't think they're going to ask that. They could. I think they could put that as a question, an FRQ multiple choice, like a little multiple choice, like give you, or if I give you Q and C and T. Oh, and the, another big thing about this is, is it exothermic or endothermic? Was heat released or heat absorbed? And remember, negative, if Q is negative, like negative 500 joules, exothermic. Positive 500 is endothermic. Endo, exo. Did heat, was heat released? Okay, so anyway... That, oh, and, and I didn't give you this equation. This is on here too. I, I skipped this one as well. Beer's law. A equals this epsilon BC. A is the absorbance. They have to measure it by the amount of light that is absorbed. Remember, you shoot, like, for example, a, a red light through a liquid. And then you measure how much red light comes out the other side. If, it, if you get, like, only, you know, you shoot in 100% light, and you get out only 10% of it, well, there's a way to calculate with natural log the, uh, the uh, absorbance. You never have to do that. They're just going to tell you the absorbance is like 0.51. And then B is the length of the, um, the tube or cuvette tube. And it's in centimeters usually, cm. Absorbance has no unit. C, here's a big one. C is the molarity. Molarity. It is molarity in mole per liter. Okay, you know, whatever, like five molar, for example. Concentration. So that's a little, just what I'm saying, these little things. This is called the, the molar absorptivity constant, epsilon. And every chemical will have its own constant right there. And I didn't really put the units for that. I, don't, I could figure it out, but it's going to make these cancel out. So it's going to be CM on the bottom liter cm on the bottom and a liter on the top and mole on the bottom cm mole but to get to make it cancel not a big deal but see if you were to read a question and again in the frq 40 multiple choice that's a great place to put a beer's law question just tell you hey i know the absorbance and i know the constant is this what will be the molarity of the liquid or if here's the molarity of the liquid you, they give you. They're going to give you like all. They're going to give you these things. Oh, and by the way, the length of the cuvette usually is one. It's a, but they'll they'll have to tell you that. They have to tell you that it, what, what the number is. It's not always one, but it, it usually is one. But um, it doesn't matter if it's two. You put a two there. So 
just knowing what things stand for it's like what I said, plug and chug. You just put in the numbers and calculate the answer. Okay. Now, after that is the official AP formula sheet. I didn't do everything. I mean, some of them I talked about last time, like delta G. Well, I could throw it back real quick. Remember, delta G is negative RT. This was in the electro. I already showed you all this, but delta G is negative um, N Faraday times the cell potential or delta G is equal to negative R T L N K. Well, these two can therefore be set equal to each other, but in these equations, R is in, is in joules because delta G, R is in joules. It's the 8.31 joule per mole Kelvin, kind of like the S value, interesting. T is always going to be in Kelvin temperature. This has no unit for the K constant, the equilibrium constant. I'm going to put an EQ there to remind yourself that's equilibrium. Delta G is in joules, um, just joules for this one. And was it, was it joule per mole? Yeah, joule per, joule per mole. Yeah, and you can make it kilojoule per mole if you had to, okay? And um, the Faraday is 96,485, I mean, they're going to give you that number. E is the cell voltage in volts, the cell potential in volts. N is the number of moles of electrons transferred. They're both joules. But those two equations can be set equal to each other. And I did that on the formula sheet thing I gave you. Formulas that are not on the AP formula sheet. Okay. I didn't. Can you believe that? I haven't even gone over those yet. I've told you some of them along the way. Negative NFE is negative RTLNK. So take away the negatives. NFE. So this is a way to go from E to K, you know, without having, bypassing G. That could pop up on a multiple choice and say, hey, I don't even need G. I, they gave me, this is a constant, and R is a constant. So, now, they, a lot of you use another equation that I, and if you, if you know that one, you can write it down and use it too. When they combine these and make another equation and make a new equation out of it. But if I know moles, potential, I mean, moles, cell potential, temperature, then I can put them in and find the K. I don't even need delta G. Okay, all right. What else do I want to tell you about? We only got like five minutes left. So um, let me talk about this other thing that I showed you. 2021 AP formulas that are not on the formula sheet. I would tell you guys, look how much time I'm going over this. This is probably more important than, any, than, than almost any other studying you might do today before the AP exam. That you go through and know all the what things stand for. Just simply knowing them when you read a question, you'll be able to plug it in and get the answer. Even if you don't even remember stuff all the way, then, then trying to worry about the, the elaborate FRQs. Now, I hope you've done those the, the top you know five lists of FRQs I told you about. But remember, I'm going to give you some leeway. So I wouldn't spend a whole lot. I would mainly go over the equation sheet and if there's time, I would have spent also a little bit more time to tell you about what's called the um, the uh, the graphs. I'll, I might say something about it in a minute. But on the formula sheet, this says equations that are not on the AP formula sheet. I told you this the other day. I have things like this. Like, if they were to say, what is the percent of copper in copper 2 sulfate? The percent by mass of copper in copper 2. If that was a question. Well, you might think, wait a minute, do I remember how to do that? Well, I gave you an equation, percent of H in H2O is equal to, in H2O, 2 times H, 2 times the mass of H, sorry about that, 2 times the mass of H divided by the mass of H2O times 100. This is on the AP, this is on the sheet I made for you, equations not on the AP formula sheet. The molar mass. That that's an easy way to see it. Look over those things. Empirical formulas on there. I put on there Coulomb's law. They have never asked you to calculate anything with Coulomb's law, but sometimes, well, you know what? You might just state Coulomb's law. You're not gonna you're not, not gonna be able to write this down anywhere. It's too much for FRQs. It sometimes comes up. But the main thing about it is radius. If you increase the radius, remember for the ionic compounds, but if you increase radius, then you're causing, if that number goes up, the energy of attraction goes down. Probably not very likely for that one. E photon, that one I already went over. 
they are not going to ask you to do anything about like an electron changes from level n equals one to n equals four. Find the the energy released. They're not going to ask you that because they don't. They haven't. They stopped doing that. But they could say an electron falls from from level four down and it releases you know five hundred um, kilojoules of, of five hundred joules of energy. What is the frequency? What is the wavelength? They could do that. So they could ask you those two equations, EHV and lambda nu equals C. Okay, I'm just going to zip through it. Oh, here's a really big thing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I didn't have time to go through all. I, I put up an old review, and it's really pretty obsolete almost. A lot of it is about the graphs that the teacher before me, he made a big, by hand, he wrote down all of his graphs and said, what is on the x-axis? What's on the y-axis? What does it represent? Well, I don't know if you really want to care to look at it, but you might look at it just the first page of it only, and it has some it has some stuff on there. You know, we only got, only got like a minute here. Well, I can stay a couple of minutes extra, and I can record it if you guys want to go if you're on the Zoom. But I'll, I'll 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 say a little something about that. You can look over my formula sheets of the things that are not on it. Let me look at the Erdman review. The Erdman, that was his name, Rich Erdman. And I wish he would come back to UCLA. Like he was good friends with Larry Walker. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Erdman review. Where is it? Date modified. Uh, did I put it up there for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. What now? What? Uh, how many of the past exams, you know, the past exam reviews that we were doing, how many of those, like, are, are you going to give us credit for? Wait, hold on a minute. You mean, I don't know if, I don't know what you're talking about, exam reviews, which one, what are you talking about? The past exams, so like the 2016 exams. Oh, the multiple choice ones. You yes. mean that? Um, I'm trying to think of how many I actually gave you to do, but I... Normally I say, I'll just say if you've done at least four of them, I'm going to give you some points. How about that? If you've all done at least four. If you've done more than four, that'll be good. I'll try to, I'll try to, I'll see a try to put a little bit of bonus. But don't, please don't, don't, today, don't, don't spend two or three hours doing, trying to think, oh, I've got homework to do. Don't even worry about that. I, I don't even want you to do that. I, I really don't. If, if you're way behind, like there's a lot you really haven't done, then, um, just, you can do it, I mean, after the AP exam, you can do a few, th I don't know. I'll be doing, working on grades, or grades will be due tomorrow night. But um, don't don't worry about that at this point. But oh, well, yeah, the bell rang and the class is over, but I'm going to, if you want to hear this thing, me talk about the graphs, you can watch, I'm going to upload this video in a little bit. I'm going to say something about graphs. Did I upload graphs on there? Let me see if I uploaded it. Uh, Yeah. AP graphs, it says from, 20, oh, from 2018. Now, let me just tell you, if you look at this graph page, this is a great thing to study because you're going to see on your multiple choice questions and probably on the FRQs, you're going to see probably five graphs or six graphs, and they're going to ask you some little question about it. Usually it's a very easy question if you remember the graph. So he made a, uh, um, a the 2018, he made a review, this teacher, of all these graphs and I would just say only on the first page of them, which has a lot, it has 16 on the first page, only the ones that you see in my red handwriting that I did, you might look at those graphs, okay? So here's one graph. Actually, they're not even going to ask you this one at all about, remember this graph, the solid, the liquid, the gas, pressure and temperature. They're not going to ask you that, okay? It was on my little chapter 10 multiple choice, you know, but they're not going to ask that one at all, okay? But look at the other one. Uh, here's a graph that says, oh, they have the one below that one on that paper, graph letter L. It gives you a straight line. Oh, it's a matching thing. This is actually a matching thing. And if you look on, there's three pages. On one page, I give you, the last page, I guess, yeah, I give you all the answers to the matching. Or no, it's on the first page. I'm sorry. The first page has the answers already. But there's a lot of graphs that are not on the AP anymore. They don't have to really worry about. But one of them is this graph, and that's the one that's ln of uh, whatever it is, natural log of a or whatever versus time, okay? And then we know the slope of the line is equal to k 
unless that equation is, I just told you about that a moment ago. All right, here's a, here's a graph. Another kinetics graph is this. It shows something going down and something else going up, like about half that amount. And so if this is A and this is B, then it's like saying, it, it talks about this is the, the, the title, 2A gives you B. So in other words, this goes down by two parts, and that goes down, that goes up by one part, okay? And this will be concentration. I'll put concentration, and this will be time, okay? And by the way, I can add on to this. If they become a straight line, if it's in a closed container, the moment they become a straight line, that is the point of equilibrium. But this part is just kinetics. It's curved down or curved up for the, the reactants, okay? Um, what else is on there? Oh, um, they have on there, below that curve, below this curve, I won't say a lot about it, but it has a titration of, looks like strong acid and strong base. I'm, I'm looking closely to see. I can't read my own writing there. Yeah. Yeah, it is strong, a strong base thing going into the strong acid. Next to it, to the right, is a weak and then I would not work the one under, or, or so graph M. Okay, so here it is. The ones that are important, graph J, not to worry about, but graph K, graph L. Graph D is very important. Graph M, graph N. Uh, oh, graph O is very, very important. O is very important. That's the reaction coordinate graph. The ionization energy is important too. I don't really have time to go through all that, but... It's the one that looks like, uh, it's graph D. It looks like this, and it comes down and up, and then that, and whatever. But it's like it's like saying the, um, the, the first ionization energy. And the main things to know about this graph, here's ionization energy, and here's atomic number. And the main thing to know is, when you go from left to right on the chart, um, IE increases. Except for group 16 is lower than group 15, and group 13 is lower than group 2. You might remember, okay? 16 is less than group 15, i.e. 1, and group 13 lower than group 2, i.e. 1. Okay? And then when you go from top to bottom, top of a period... I mean, top of a group to bottom, i.e. decreases. All right, but anyway, this graph actually shows that, and we did that once, so I, I don't have time to go through it. I really, well, well, we're out of time anyway. Graph H is really important because it shows you about solid, where's the solid liquid gas, where is it increasing in temperature, where is it, um, and, and that's it. Th those are the main ones I would look at there. I wouldn't even worry about the other graphs. So, oh, Graph G is a good graph to look at boiling point. You can look at my, I have the answer keys of those on there. So, oh, and graph C. Graph C. Graph G, it talks about some boiling point. Graph C, this is the one we call the ice cream graph. Remember? This is the number of, um, number of molecules. No, this is number of molecules. And, at each given temperature and well no energy and this is either energy or it can be energy kinetic energy or it could also be velocity of molecules and remember on a graph temperature a temperature b temperature c the center tells you the average energy average kinetic energy a for b at temperature b the average is b at temperature c it's, it's like the line below c and um and then also, as temperature increases, the graph, it moves to the right. If I take a scoop of ice cream and I roll it into a corner, it would be really cold right there when it hit the corner. But as, as it cooled off and melted, it would get lower and lower. But the temperature is getting higher, though, the, though it's going down lower. So that's it. So the graph review, hey, I did it in seven minutes almost. If you look at my red answer key sheet, I would say the graphs to look at, graph D, graph K, Graph um, L, J, no, no, not J, not J. Graph K, L, graph, um, 
M N O graph G and H. And um and of course some graphs I did not tell you about. I'll, I'll show you to you real quick. I don't they might be on another page. I don't know. These two graphs. Um or oh my goodness. Probably the most important one is this one. I showed you this the other day. Remember this looking thing? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. You label it out. And um, this is the number of electrons. The relative number. So like if that were 2, then obviously that would be 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. Whatever. It'll be 6 there or whatever. You got the idea. And this would be energy. Now, you got to watch the unit. If it's in joules... You can easily take the energy here and put it into this equation. They can have you do this on a calculation, energy in joules. But that's one to know the PES, photoelectron spectroscopy, okay? And find out the element because 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 2p6, sorry, 3s1. Well, that would be sodium, okay? Now, the other graphs, all of the ones for kinetics I told you about, like for zero order, first order, second order, and then... Um, and then, you know, what gives a straight line, but also just know that any chemical, as time goes by, pretty much any reactant will curve down, unless it's zero order, it'd be a straight line, okay? It curves down like that. And then, okay, the gas law chapter, I don't know, this is really going back now, volume and temperature are directly proportional. The volume is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature. That means you get a line like that, all right? Pressure versus volume are indirectly Indirectly looks like a curve, and it's going that way and going that going that way. Okay, pressure and volume, volume temperature. For that matter, pressure and temperature would also be going up. The pressure of a gas is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature at constant volume. PVT, PVT, and all that stuff. Okay, those are all the main graphs. There's more, but ah, I hope this will help some of you guys. I cannot wait, you guys. I'm so glad. I'm proud of y'all. All of your work. I, I really am, and do the best you can. I'll see y'all. Adios, adios. See, thank you for those that stayed in here too. All right, I'll see y'all later on.